In the movie Juno, there is a, a part where this young woman who's named Juno is talking with her father, and her father is disappointed with her. She's gotten into some pretty serious circumstances. And he says, I thought you were a different kind of girl, Juno. She's, she's ended up pregnant. And she says to him, I don't really know what kind of girl I am. The movie is humorous, and, and it's a cultural movie. It's a secular movie. But there's something there that I think is a piercing statement for us to consider as complementarians at the close of this conference. People all around us are living in real confusion about what it means to be human, about what it means to be a man, about what it means to be a woman. I want us to very clearly say today that we are here, we exist, CBMW exists to provide good answers to just that kind of question. And the primary answer we have to offer people is the gospel. We are about the gospel. That's why this conference is called CBMW and the gospel. How, how is this connection made, though? Well, let me give you a few ways that it is. Number one, the gospel creates sexual ethics. Uh, we should not divorce sexual ethics or any other body of ethics from the gospel. We should, we should see uh, an inextricable connection between the two. In other words, you don't simply get saved and then say, I'm a Christian, but all this other stuff that I have to think about and maybe perhaps inhabit, that doesn't really matter. I'm just a Christian, and I put the other stuff by the side. Sexual ethics are what the gospel impacts. Your manhood and womanhood is what is transformed by the gospel. If not your gender and sexuality, what is the gospel for? Think about the curse itself. The curse is a gendered curse. Adam and Eve received different sentences in the curse, and that means in turn that when the gospel transforms us by the power of God, when we trust in Jesus Christ as our Lord and, and Savior through His atonement and His resurrection, we are transformed, and that curse, that gendered curse, is overturned. The gospel frees us to live as God intended. So hear me very, very clearly. We're not sad and, and long-faced about being complementarians. We don't think we've been dealt a bad hand. We think that we are free to live as God intended. We think that we are living the most joyful existence one can live as a man or woman because God has saved us and has transformed us and has, and has allowed us to become once more who we were made to be. Now, I know that the culture presses in and drives you the exact opposite way and wants to make you and me feel very much ashamed for being a complementarian. And there are many evangelical uh, voices who would urge the same. They want us to feel shame, a sting at being complementarian. But here in the fresh, clear air of the CBMW National Conference, let me clearly say to you, this, there is no shame here. There is shame in our sin, but there is no shame in being a complementarian. Let me also say this. We are a positive, transformation-driven movement. We are most excited at CBMW about men and women being, being changed and transformed. We are not most excited about trolling and internet controversy and Twitter wars. Many people around us are very excited about that and make their identity off of that, and that is not what we spend our time doing. We see that it exists. Uh, sometimes we have to engage to set the record straight. We, we do not hate the people who would oppose us, but, but I want you to hear me say, in 2014 at CBMW, that is not what makes us excited. That is not why I'm, I am in this role. I'm not here to do battle in the gender wars. I am here for life transformation. That is why CBMW was founded, and that is why it continues to exist, and I trust that is why Almighty God sustains it to this day. Let me also say this. We are not established primarily for 50-year-old white men. We love all people. <laughs> we love women, and I trust that this panel has, in some, some sense, demonstrated that. That is, that is on purpose. This movement is pulsing with life and health and youth. This is a young movement. Most of the people who tweet at us or, or respond to us or engage us on Facebook. We love that. They are young, and that's, that's glorious. We're seeing this younger generation uh, be vibrant and, and enjoy, again, as I was talking about a minute ago, uh, being a complementarian. So, so cancel the apology tour. Be a winsome complementarian. 
handle objections, make clear that sin affects us all. We are not without sin. We love egalitarians, too, uh, uh, who love the gospel. But cancel the apology tour. Be a vibrant, God-inhabited man or woman to the glory of God. Fourth, we love marriage. We love singles. There's absolutely no tension between these statements. I trust if you have felt any tension between these statements, at least in terms of our public presence and representation, that a bomb called David Platt went off and has exploded that sensibility because it is not true. We sometimes get flack for that. We, we, have, we have a little bit of a tricky balance to strike. We have to be very pro-marriage in a culture in which marriage is sliding into the abyss. True marriage. But that does not mean that we don't love single men and women or see them as full citizens of the unstoppable gospel-driven kingdom of God. They are. So hear me say that publicly. Lastly, people might not have thought that CBMW was relevant or needed anymore. It might seem like our purpose has been used up. We fought the great wars of the 80s and 90s. We published the Blue Book. We have had a number of godly men lead us publicly take tons of hits for biblical truth, and now it's over. The, the, parties, the parties ended. Well, then the culture exploded. The culture has gone up in flames in recent days, and we are once again an absolutely vital ministry, both for evangelical concerns, both for the church, both for who will be a pastor and who is head of the home, but also because the public square is burning, and, and we are needed. Who more has a stake in marriage, in manhood, in womanhood, in transgender issues than we, than us? No one has more of a stake. CBMW is vital. I, I truly believe this. If we never receive another dollar, we will continue to publish whatever we can online because we are needed. Not, not for our own sake, but because churches like yours have commissioned us to speak truth on these contested issues. And brothers and sisters, there are going to be fewer and fewer of us who will stand up on these matters. Do you see that? Our friends are disappearing. There is no such thing, really, anymore as kind of a neutral supporter of traditional marriage. It's, that is a disappearing, almost empty set, almost a null set. So we need you, and perhaps you need us. In, in California and Maine, little boys can now enter girls' restrooms if they claim transgender identity. Think about what that does to a worldview. Think about what that does to a little girl. Who is going to speak up on that issue? Who's going to raise their voice anymore? See, our culture is entranced with this idea of being authentic. Whatever you most authentically feel, that is what you are. That might change depending on the day or the week. We are here to help you as pastors and churches and Christians in all spheres of life stand up and say that that is wrong. We need to protect young women in this case. So, CBMW, I believe, has a vital role to play going ahead. Things have shifted a little bit. We're pivoting a little bit. We're not leaving behind our former work at all, but we're also having to add a new front of ministry. I want you to hear that we are standing in the gap with you, with pastors, with churches. We are standing on the gospel. All of the issues I have mentioned just quickly have the gospel as their solution. If someone is caught up in homosexuality, that's a repentance issue. If you're an angry young man, if you've never had a father, if, if he's never popped into your life, if he's never mentored you and trained you, that's a gospel issue. If you're seeking to change your gender, that's a gospel issue. Do you see what I was talking about at the, at the start of my brief remarks? You can't divorce the gospel from sexual ethics. You can't put your life in a box and the gospel in a box. So we are here to help you promote these truths uh, to lost people all around us and in our churches. Let me close with a story, a true story. A godly man I know at the seminary at which I work and teach was telling me about a young boy adopted who had been told that he could not walk. All his life, he had asked about walking and seen siblings and friends walk, and he couldn't. 
He couldn't take a single solitary step. Around that identity, he, he began feeling sorry for himself, and he began indulging in this kind of mindset. I can't walk, and I'm, I'm pitiable, and, you know, I, I just I need to be pampered by other people. Well, this man looked at this boy and said, this boy can walk. He can walk. He doesn't have an incurable disability. And he trained him over the span of just a few days. This is a real story here in Louisville. He trained him over the span of a few days to walk. And now he's walking and playing with his brothers and sisters and enjoying life. All because, all because a godly father spoke up. He dared to look at somebody who was in trouble, who had been told he couldn't change, and tell him that change was possible. That, in microcosm, is why we exist. Thank you for attending. Let me pray for you, and we will be dismissed. Heavenly Father, thank you for these people. Thank you for, for folks who care enough to come out to a conference when another conference is impending and think together about biblical gender and sexuality. Lord, we are in territory that you have charted. We are here because we're excited about your gospel, because it has transformed us as men and women and is continuing to do so. We praise you so much for your work in our lives. We pray that you will use CBMW and especially the churches of your kingdom, the people of your kingdom, missionaries all over the world to speak the truth about these matters that we have discussed today. And we pray that you'll do a mighty work through us, Lord, even, even as the culture is in flames, even as discouragement is so easy to feel, even as we are hard-pressed, even in evangelical circles, uh, to stay the course and to speak the truth. Lord, do a great work in your people. Power, power this movement ahead. Come what may. We pray this in Jesus' awesome name. Amen. You're dismissed.